Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo, and this video is an unscripted, unfiltered, unplanned landscape edit. What I like to do in these videos is basically take a photo and then walk through my editing as I'm doing it live without a plan, without a script, like I said, and just kind of share some thoughts about what I'm thinking about as I approach editing the photo. I've done these a few times. Feedback seems to be pre pretty positive, and all I want to do is just demonstrate the kind of things you can do and the way I think about editing a photo and how I approach it. So hopefully it sheds a little bit of light, no pun intended, um, in terms of how I relight a photo, how I like to edit a photo, and that sort of thing. So here's my base photo. I always start and develop raw. I always shoot raw. I like to start and develop raw. And what I want to do here is the first thing, of course, even though I start and develop raw, what I like to do is not just start moving sliders, but look at the photo and try to make a plan, for lack of better words. Look at it and say, all right, what needs work? What needs fixing or what needs enhancement or what do I want to enhance creatively? In other words, what do I want to do to the photo? And I look at this one and it was a sunset, but it was a little bit tame. You can see some pink in those upper clouds, but it was a nice scene. I got a nice reflection and uh, obviously it's a little bit dark. So clearly I want to brighten it. I want to selectively add some, uh, some structure or some crunch, some detail in areas like the mountains. And I want to bring up the reflection, which is part of uh, brightening the photo is going to help with. And of course, the things I like to do include popping color. I want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. That's my plan, right? Brighten the photo, pop the reflection, pop the color, get a little bit of detail in the right places and just accentuate the sunset look and feel to this photo. It was sunset. It was really pretty, but um, some of the uh, color isn't coming through here. So I typically uh, start, like I said, in fact, I always start in raw develop. What I'll typically do is just kind of balance the light, a little bit of contrast, adjust highlights and shadows, which for me is normally highlights down and shadows up. Again, I tend to expose to the left, so my photos are often a little bit dark. But if you look at the before, there it is in the current state. I think we got a much better looking photo. I'm going to go ahead and add a tiny bit more contrast, a slight bump further in exposure, or excuse me, in shadows. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, blacks and whites, I don't think I'm going to mess with. And the color temperature, I always experiment with this. I just like to see, you know, does it look a little bit better if I go cooler? I do like cool photos, even in sunsets, because I like that cool uh, playing off some of the warmth that's in the sunset. Uh, but this one, I also want to look at taking it to the right and see what that looks like. So I just kind of drag this slowly until I see something that I kind of like. And if I go too far, I, I tend not to like overly warm photos unless it's like golden hour and it's boom kind of just hitting you. So something like that, I don't really like. So I'll often just reset it. And I think in this case, I might go a slight bit warmer and maybe a slight bit of tint. And then I'll come down here to saturation and vibrance. And usually I will just move the vibrance a little bit, you know, like a 15 or 20. I don't want to overdo it because I like to play with color with some other tools, but I'd like to play with vibrance a little bit in the raw develop tool. So let me take a look at the before and the after. There's my before and that's my current state. I think that looks pretty good. I consider raw develop basically me getting my canvas in place, my base photo prior to doing any necessary edits or creative edits, I just like to think of raw develop as the one that helps me set the stage for what I'm going to do next. Now, sharpening can come in handy, noise reduction if you need it, optics, things like that. I definitely use those on photos. I'm not going to use it here. I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Now, I do see this spot in the sky and I see another one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on erase and just click on remove dust spots. See if that will take those out for me automatically. Okay, I think it did a good job. Those have come out, and so now I've got this photo. And even though I think about balancing the light in raw develop, I also like to use super contrast. And for me, I tend to edit in this uh, from the approach of light first, and then detail, and then color. So I'm still on light, really, which is, for to me, super contrast is probably the second best tool after uh, raw develop. It just gives you a lot of control over moving that light around. So as you can see here, I'm kind of playing with the highlights. I'm gonna do a little bit there. I'm gonna check the, yeah, look at that, how the difference that makes in the sky and the reflection by adjusting that mid-tone balance might actually increase that contrast more. And because I got the balance so far to the left, it's really brightening those mid-tones all across the photo. I like that quite a bit. Now I want to play with shadows. If I go left, that's going to brighten those shadows. 
and that's helping me pop that reflection, which is one of the goals that I talked about. Let me show you super contrast. There it is before, there it is after. That might be a little bit much now that I look at it, so maybe I'm gonna pull this back just a tad. Um, I do like to have contrast in an image. I think it looks more natural. So you expect certain things to be slightly darker, uh, you know, certain parts of the photo to be darker, unless it's like a perfectly lit mid-afternoon kind of thing. But sunset photo, you expect to have a little bit of contrast. Super contrast allowed me to really pop the light in certain areas like that reflection, but I don't feel like I've overdone it. So I think I've got nice control over the light. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and commit super contrast. Now, another thing to think about is Relight AI, and I'm gonna try brightness near just to see what that will do for me, and then I'm gonna adjust the depth so that I can uh, further just take a look at popping that uh, reflection. You can see here as I'm adjusting this, it's really bringing that foreground to life. I just wanna be careful, I don't wanna overdo it. Like I said, I want a little bit of shadow. I don't want an HDR kind of look where everything is perfectly lit and it's an incredibly perfectly balanced exposure where every shadow you have perfect visibility into, things like that. I don't really want to do that with my photos. I did back in the HDR days. I'm not like that anymore. I just like a little bit more dose of realism uh, in terms of how the light is distributed. So there it is before relight. There it is after. I like that. I'm going to pull it down slightly. And one more time, before and after. I kind of like that. Uh, actually, I'm going to pull that back a little bit more. But um, I think Relight has helped me. So develop, super contrast, Relight. I think I've got a nice looking exposure so far. That's what I started with, really dark. And now I've got a much better looking image. Now that I've balanced the light, I'm going to go play with the detail a little bit. And usually the place I start first is Structure AI. And I highly recommend masking things. I'm going to go ahead and drag this to like a 20, 25. I tend to use this quite a bit and I like it, but I do want to be careful simply because it's easy to start dragging sliders and then you get this kind of crazy over the top stuff. I don't want to do that. I'm trying to go for a nice, tame, but beautiful kind of a nice pop in the landscape, but I don't want to overdo it. So I think about a 25 looks pretty good and I want to be selective there. So I'm going to go click on mask and I'm gonna click on Mask AI and see what it comes up with in terms of the objects it identifies in the photo, which will help me selectively apply structure, hopefully in the places I wanted to apply it. Okay, I'm gonna click on Mountains. Okay, that's not bad, that'll help. And I'm gonna click on Natural Ground. That's gonna help as well. And I'm gonna click on Flora. Okay, and that picked up all the trees. Now you can see this is not perfect. You can also click uh, water, for example, and see what that highlights. You can see it gets all that, and then if you click it again, it deselects it. So that allowed me to remove where it overlapped into the water. I'm gonna try the same thing with the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and click sky, see what that identifies. You can see it's done a good job picking up the sky. I'm gonna click it again to deselect it. And I don't really know that that helped a little bit, but that method, I call it stack and subtract, which one of my kind viewers mentioned in one of my previous videos. And I'm like, that's the perfect description for what we're doing here. Um, there's a little bit of overlap there. So I'm gonna go into brush. I'm gonna go into erase, and I'm gonna come in here and just erase that from there. And just to make sure, yeah, those that's just the pink in the clouds because that color is so close to the mask overlay color. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think I've got a nice mask in the areas that I want to have the mask. And now I can come in and play with the amount. I've got a 24. You know, if I go a little further, it's going to pop that. But also notice when you use Structure AI, it is kind of brightening that area. So I think I might go to low 30s, something like that. I'm just trying to get a little bit of crunch in those areas. And you can see I'm also getting it in the grass on the left-hand side. There it is um, one more time before, and there it is now. I think I'm fine with that. I, I like that. So I've got the light balanced. I think I've got a nice looking image overall in terms of the light distribution. It's how I want it to look. Um, I've got a little bit of structure added across the mountains and that grass on the uh, left side there. Now it's time to play with color. And while a lot of people would go into color and just drag saturation, in fact, I'll go try, um, I tend to use vibrance more than saturation. Um, it's giving a nice little pop to things, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's gonna pop a lot of the color and I wanna be careful, I don't wanna overdo it. I like a little bit of vibrance, but I think I'm gonna do like a 20. I, I don't really use the saturation slider much because you know you can quickly get into something like that, which is over the top. I don't want that look. Just a little pop of vibrance I think, um, I think looks good here. What I'd like to accentuate is some of that golden light, kind of that sunset look and feel. 
There's not a ton of it in this photo, but you can bring it up using a couple of different tools. I'm gonna to start with Golden Hour, which basically takes the warm tones that are there and pops them a little bit. So if you look at that pink in the sky and the pink in that cloud kind of behind the mountain on the left, it's kind of popping that. Now, if I go too far, I get quite a bit. So you wanna be careful, but I do wanna apply this to the entire photo. I don't wanna mask it in. So I'm gonna go low, like maybe a 30. Notice it's popping the yellows and greens that, that are in the grass. And I'm gonna come in and fix that here in a second, but there it is before golden hour and there it is now. I think I like that. And while I'm talking about the greens and the yellows and the grass, that's where I come into HSL, incredibly powerful and potent. And if I just take this yellow saturation down, that might help a little bit. And if I drag the luminance down, that might help a little bit as well. Yeah, you see how that yellow luminance really impacts the grass. That green, those kind of natural bright green colors have a lot of yellow in them. So I control that oftentimes with the yellow luminance or saturation slider. So there it is before and after. And it doesn't really have a lot of impact on the color in the sky. If it did, you could just mask it in selectively. I think I'm okay there. But now I'm back to my um, previous uh, filter where I use golden hour to try to pop some of those warmer tones. I wanna get a little bit more, so I'm gonna go experiment with toning, uh, something that I love. And I just wanna, I'm in the highlights because generally those warmer tones in a sunset are gonna be in the highlights. And I'm just gonna drag this a little bit to the right. And as you can see, now if you go too far, you really get a lot. But again, I'm gonna go kinda of tame here, maybe like a 20 just to kind of pop that a little bit. So one more time before and current state, I like that. And while I'm on color, I'm gonna try color harmony. Brilliance and warmth are really good. Brilliance, as the name implies, does really pop things overall. I'm gonna be careful uh, by avoiding that one, but I am gonna try the warmth to see what that does. Yeah, that's, that's global warmth on the photo. I don't really like it, so I'm gonna skip that. So let's go down to color balance. And actually, I'm in midtones. I'm gonna stay in midtones. Let's just try a little bit of warmth in the midtones. So in the cyan, I'm gonna go slightly to the right, which is more red. And I'm gonna try the yellow here in the yellow blue to see what that does. I don't really like that. I'm gonna reset that by a double click. We'll send it back to zero. I'm gonna try the magenta to get a little bit away from the green. Yeah, I think I like that. Let me show you the before and after. It's a slight overall look or shift in color, but there it is before. And there it is now. And of course you can try the highlights as well. Something similar, which is a little bit more towards the red and away from the cyan and the highlights, maybe a little bit more towards the magenta. Just be careful. Like if I go very far, I'm starting to get a really kind of purple look. In fact, I don't really like that. I'm gonna go back to zero. Let me try the yellows here in the highlights. Uh, I don't really like that either. I'm gonna reset that. I think I like the little touch that I did there, which is a three. Let me show you the before and after for color harmony overall. There it is before and there it is after. I think that's about it. The only other thing I'm gonna do is come in with a vignette. I like to wrap up my photos with a vignette, not always, but it does help you control and pop the light a little bit. By giving that a little bit darker edge, I think it helps frame a little bit of that foreground element here where it's a little bit darker. This creates a little bit more darkness so it kind of slightly undoes what I did by brightening that foreground to pop the reflections, but I don't think it's too much. And I do wanna add a little bit of inner light. And I think what I'm gonna do is come back and reduce the intensity overall of the vignette. I just wanted a little bit there to give it a little bit of oomph. So there it is before, and there it is now. And I'm gonna pull back that inner light. I think that's a little too much. One more time, let me look at this. There it is before, there it is now. Yeah, I think that's it. That's my edit, my friends. Let me show you the before. Dark photo, lacking detail, too hard to see things like the reflection doesn't pop, the middle uh, middle ground in the photo, like the mountains and those reflections didn't pop and the color was kind of lacking. And now I think we brightened the photo in a lot of areas, popped that reflection and got a lot better color overall. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm quite happy with it. That's my edit. Those are the kind of things I'm thinking about when I'm editing a photo, which is basically Start slow, make a plan, figure out what you wanna do with the photo. Then I approach adjusting the light first and then the detail and then the color. And I think you can really, by taking your time and thinking about things, you can really bring these things together to get the outcome or the final result that you want. Here's what I have. I really like this. One more time, the before and after. That's what I started with. That's where I am now. That's an unscripted live edit, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about how I'm thinking about things and hopefully inspires you to try some of these on your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon. And until then, adios.